creation cries to you. Worshiping in spirit and in truth. Glory to the faithful one, Jesus Christ, God's Son. All creation gives you praise. You alone are truly great. You alone, O oh God, who reigns for eternity. God is great, and His praise fills the earth, fills the heavens, and His name will be praised through all the earth. God is great, sing His praise, all the earth. In all the heavens, cause we're living for the glory of your name. The glory of your name. All to you, O oh God, we bring. Jesus, teach us how to live. Let your fire burn in us, and we may hear, and all may see. God is great, and His grace fills the earth, fills the heavens, and His name will be praised through all the earth. Oh, God is great, sing His praise. All the earth and all the heavens, cause we're living for the glory of your name, the glory of your name. Holy is the Lord now. Holy is the Lord, the whole of sea, the whole of sea. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. The whole of seas. The whole of seas. Holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. The whole of seas. The whole of seas. Holy. Holy. The whole of sea, the whole of sea. God is great. That God is great, and His praise fills the earth, it fills the heavens, and His name will be praised through all the earth. God is great. Sing His praise, all the earth. All the heavens, cause we're living for the glory of your name, the glory of your name. Hallelujah, Lord. We want to welcome you this morning. And today's a very special day. It's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And we just want to invite the Holy Spirit just to come into this place and to come into your home this morning and just saturate you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, do your many wonders in this house this morning, Lord. They were in an upper chamber. They were all in water cool. When the Holy Ghost descended as was promised by our Lord. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Yes, this power from heaven descended with the sound of a rushing wind. Tons of fire came down upon them as the Lord said he would send. Oh, Lord, send the power 
just now. Oh, Lord's in the power just now. Oh, Lord's in the power just now. And baptize everyone. Yes, this old time power was given to our fathers who were true. This is promised to believers, and we all may have it too. Come on, Lord. Oh, Lord's in the power just now. Oh, Lord's in the power just now. Oh, Lord's in the power just now. And baptize everyone. Oh, Lord. And oh, Lord's in the power just now. Oh, Lord's in the power just now. Oh, Lord's in the power just now. And baptize everyone. Send the fire, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire today, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire today, send the fire. Send the fire, send the fire, send the fire today, send the fire, do it Lord, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire today, send the fire, send the fire. Send the fire, send the fire today, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire today. Hallelujah, Lord, send your Holy Ghost fire. How many need to just filled up of the Holy Spirit this morning in this house? You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the Spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. You provide. And you provide the fire. And I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the Spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Love of God. Love of God. Overflow, permeate all my soul. Love of God, love of God. Overflow, permeate all my soul. You provide now, and you provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. And you provide the spirit. And I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. 
Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. You provide for you provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. I will open up and say, Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Love of God. Love of God. Overflow. Permeate. All my soul. Love of God. Overflow, permeate all my soul. For you provide, and you provide a fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me. Love of God, love of God, overflow, me all my soul, love of God, overflow, me all my soul. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. And you provide the spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Oh, 
We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We are asking for water. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We are asking for water. We're in a dry and thirsty land. Come on. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. And we are asking for water. We're in a dry. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We are asking for water. So let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Lord, let it rain. Let it rain. Open the flood gates. Let it rain, 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 open the floodgates of heaven, Lord, let it rain. Let it be, let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of hell. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We are asking for water. Fill our cups, Lord. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We need your water, Lord. We are asking for water. Fill us full this morning, Lord. We're in a dry. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We are asking for water. We need your rain, Lord. We're in a dry. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We're in a dry and thirsty land. We are asking for water. Lord, let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, oh, let it rain. open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, let Holy Ghost rain, Holy Ghost fire this morning. They were all in one accord. Tongues of fire, tongues of fire fell. Fill 
us. Come fill us with your power and live inside of me. Because you are the living water. And now sing it. And you're the living Welcome you now, welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power, Lord. Live inside of me. We welcome you now. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us this morning. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Because you, you're the living water. You're the living water. You're my never dry fountain. You're the drink of Take on me control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. And live inside of me. Jesus said, I have to go away. But when I go, I'm going to send you another comforter. The office of the Holy Spirit is so vital in this hour. He comes to live in the, in the believer. The Bible says his office work is one to convict and one to convict, convince of truth, and to empower. How many know we need to be empowered? We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Now when the rapture comes and the church is ushered out of here, the office work of the Holy Spirit changes. Because he'll no longer reside in the believer, but he'll still operate on this in this earth because many will still come to know him even after the rapture. But we're so grateful that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit that we have someone that empowers us, that guides us, that directs us, that teaches us. That's where the anointing comes from. That's where revelation comes from. That's where salvation comes from. Salvation cannot be possible without the moving of the Holy Spirit. And so we're grateful for the Holy Spirit. As Sherry had mentioned, today's Pentecost Sunday. But every day really is, is a day that we're grateful for the Holy Spirit. Let's lift it one more time and let's sing that once again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We are in your presence. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. And come fill us with, with your, your power. Live, Live inside, inside of me. me. And welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. 
the living water. Is you're the living water. You're my ever-drying fountain. From the dreary grounds take complete control. We welcome you Welcome, Holy Spirit, as we are in your presence, fill us with your power, live inside of me. Continue to worship him. There's an anointing here this you morning. Oh Lord, we reach out to you and we give you praise. Oh God, you're worthy. We give you glory, Lord. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Oh Lord, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You are worthy of it all. You're so worthy, Lord, and we bless your name. You are worthy of it all. Lord, you're so worthy, we bless your name. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. And I exalt you. Oh, Lord, I exalt you. I exalt you. Lord, I exalt your name. Oh, I exalt you. Oh, Lord. You may be seated. I'm going to have Ron, would you give us an update? Kind of tell us what you went through in recent days and uh, where you're at today. Um, I've had two of the spinal cord stimulators 
spinal cord stimulators I uh, put in my back before and both times they got it back that they had to remove them. So um, the first time they just took it out and then they were going to put another one in. But it's when the virus first started. So they ended up having to wait um, like six or seven months before they could do it again. And it got infected. So they took that one out and the doctor said he didn't recommend putting another one in. So basically I was back to where we want <laughs> and uh, so um, my the doc, the surgeon he moved away and um, so I was seeing an, another guy uh, Dr. Thompson and he's a, a spinal doctor surgeon and um, he told me he wanted me to go downtown to Grant that there was a doctor there that specialized in the stimulators and he was very good at it and they used a different brand so um, I said, right now, I'm, I'm open for anything. So uh, he made uh, arrangements for me, sent me down there. And on Monday the 10th, I had uh, surgery, and which blew me away because they sent me home that day. And I'm sorry, I'm a wuss. I don't, don't send me home in pain. I can do that all by myself. So um, I woke up Tuesday morning. I couldn't move. I couldn't sit up in bed. I couldn't get my feet off the side of the bed. And um, so the three of us, Deb and Ronnie and I, we all keep our cell phones by our bed, on our bed. And I said, it's like having um, intercom in the house. You just call somebody. <laughs> so we did, um, I called her and she called Ronnie and he came up and helped me get out of bed. Um, my whole left side was just like, I had nothing and I couldn't do anything. So uh, when the doctor opened, uh, Deb called him. He uh, told her to um, bring me to the, his office. So they took me in there and um, he told the lady that saw me that he had like to uh, have me admitted to the hospital. Well, at that point, I was very much into that because it was like, you know, I can't do nothing. I can't even sit up by myself, stand up by myself. And uh, I was in there, ended up being in there like five days. And I did regain some strength in my left leg and stuff, but it's still really bad for me. And, um, but the stimulator is working as, long, as soon as I can figure out how to operate it, charge it and operate it and everything. It's like, you almost have to be a brain surgeon to do all this stuff. And I said, I, I'm not very um, mechanical. <laughs> And but anyways, I, I, the doctor told me he wanted to put a different brand in there, and he, so he did. The one before was Boston Scientific. This is, I'm sorry. Deb told me to hurry up. I'm sorry. And anyway, um, he put it in deeper to the ones were prior, and um, so actually I'm doing better. I, Still have trouble getting around. Still have trouble getting up, um, walking, <laughs> all the major things. But um, I know God's with me, and He'll, you know, He's taken care of these issues before. So I trust Him, and I know He'll heal me. Thank you, Ron. Uh, we want to give each week opportunity because we want, as you, as you, as these names come to your spirit that you pray. And we want to give you updates so you know, you know, when Ron went through that surgery, he was unable to move his arms and his legs. And now he's doing better. So keep praying for Ron. Daryl, can you give us a quick update on Joyce? Um, Wednesday, a week ago, my wife and I were at the grocery store putting groceries in the car. And... Um, all of a sudden, I sensed that uh, she was leaving me, <laughs> and she was trying to back up, but in the process, I think she tripped one foot over another. The, the, the knee that she had bionically uh, replaced uh, kind of dragged the drug at that point, and she went down on her hip um, and her knee. And when I saw the look on her face, I knew it wasn't good. <laughs> and and uh, to make a long story short, we didn't want the milk to spill, so we went home, took care of important things first, and and put that away. 
otherwise I would have been in a heap of trouble in the hospital because, you know, she didn't want that to spoil. So to make a long story short, her knee wasn't, isn't totally healed from that total replacement. Uh, and so this past week's been pretty tough. Uh, she's had a lot of swelling. Uh, I would say yesterday when she got up yesterday morning, it's probably twice as big as it ought to have been. When she got up this morning, it's normal size. She slept well last night. Um, just, you know, we're not there yet, but we're on the way, and God's in control. We'll give you a quick update on Lundy Lentz as well. Remember, those that have been praying for Lundy, uh, she had, what was it, 6% of her heart working, and now it's at 65%. We prayed, I had prayer with her yesterday. Uh, she goes into surgery tomorrow with her back. So some of these people are really going through all kinds of things. It's one thing after another, just like Ron. It seems like it's just one thing after another. Mom, you want to give us an update on where you're at and kind of what you went through a few weeks ago? Well, I thank the Lord for bringing me out. I had had to go to the hospital. My blood pressure was way, way up. And... Uh, so they had to put me on a lot of medication, which I don't really like, but I guess at the time it has to be. But now I'm I'm feeling much better. I get my good days and bad days, and uh, sometimes the blood pressure will make my head uh, kind of uh, throb. And... Uh, that's a horrible feeling. So uh, the Lord is helping me with that, too. I still get a little once in a while, but it's a lot better than what it was. And I thank you for all your prayers, because I know without your prayers, I may not have been here. And thank you very much. Is there anyone else that has a prayer request or a testimony before we move on? We show as often as we can updates, and sometimes it's probably not always easy to read, but we, John has that up there. But these are the requests, and the, the list grows and grows and grows. And this is what goes to our uh, intercessors, the people that pray, and uh, they take those requests. We try to get updates as regularly as we possibly can. And it was good to hear from Manuel this past week from San Antonio, Texas. My dad had prayer with him several weeks back. Now, let me just say this to you. He didn't have a physical issue. And he, he called the prayer center that God would get rid of the big bugs. And so I followed up on that and called Manuel back in San Antonio. And he says the bed bugs are gone. And what, what triggered that in me this morning was yesterday we picked up a special gift that he sent to the prayer center. Uh, and it just reminded me of that prayer that my dad had with Manuel. And he's out in San Antonio. And so God even hears bed bug issues. So anything, what it, there, he says, we don't have any of them anymore. It's all gone. And thank you for praying. And so whatever the need is, God hears us. God answers. God's with us. And the needs are great. They keep growing. But we're also hearing testimonies of what God is doing. And we will update as we get them. And we'll give you updates as well. Uh, John, can you give me the update? This is where we're at. This is a miracle right here. I consider it a miracle. I remember earlier this year, actually before then, we didn't know really how to approach this. We had farmed. Beulah land for many, many years. And the Holy Spirit says, you know, I don't want you to farm it again this year. And I'm thinking, well, you know, that's a lot. You know, you, you, all that much. It was around $3,300 a year is what we got from the farmer. But it was more than that. It was the taxes. And then we knew we'd have to pay three years back of what they call farm recruitment. It's the taxes from the past three years. You'd have to go back and pay it. But we really felt like, you know, it was God leading us to do it. So back in February, we paid, it was a little over 16000 the whole thing, plus the loss of the revenue. And so the Lord provided the first half of the year. We were able to give the check. So the county went that and they cashed it. 
And then we still had this $7,790 due, and that's due in June. Look at the balance. The balance is zero. And so uh, uh, the bill has not arrived yet, but the money's sitting there waiting. And so we're grateful that we're able to take care of that. And as soon as that is paid, then we apply for tax exemption for 38 acres. So uh, keep praying for that. But that's a miracle. I, you know, I, I, I know what it does for me because I know where we were at many months ago. And that's a zero balance. And we're going to be able to take care of that. And it's a, it's a God thing in my mind. Give us an update on our mortgage. This is where we're at. We're at one hundred and twenty thousand nine six two. Second mortgage dropped about another two thousand or so. So it's coming down. And keep believing, keep praying, keep trusting. And as the Lord speaks to you, do what you can to help. And uh, it, it's an amazing thing to watch it because it comes from places we can never anticipate, and it comes in the t right time. Uh, it's a it's a God thing. It really is a God thing. And so we're grateful for what God has done. We're grateful for what he is doing. And we're believing for the miracles ahead. Amen? Okay. I'll let you say it. <laughs> let me just say this. Uh, let, let me, I, I have to say this, that when we, when we, when you speak in this room, put the mic up to your mouth, because what happens is we have another church online and they're listening and they can't hear and there's been weeks where it's been dead silence and they're watching an empty kind of whatever they're watching but they're not hearing anything so take they're they're out there we know you're there anyways and we appreciate it let me say we appreciate it but we don't want dead air why they're they're another you know wherever they're at it's all over the place and we appreciate them tuning in but they need to hear what's going on For 11 days, Hamas in Israel has been under heavy uh, warfare missiles, hundreds and hundreds of missiles that have been shot over into Israel for 11 days. And this past week when we've been praying, you've been praying for Israel, that should be a high priority in our prayers and there was a ceasefire announced. And the month of May, May 14th, is when Israel became a nation. And that was 73 years ago. And then it's in June that they took back Jerusalem. And these are very, very important prophetic fulfillments. So you're going to hear on the news in regard to what's going on over there because the enemy wants to stop the return of the Lord. He's coming back to Jerusalem and Satan doesn't, he wants to knock that out. So don't hold up on your prayers for the Mideast and for Israel. If you want to do some study regarding end times events, one of the things that would be important to take a look at, especially with what's going on in the Middle East, is the Gog and Magog War, or the Ezekiel War. Some refer to it as the Ezekiel War or the Gog and Magog War. That is one of the, that's one of the things that's going to happen very, very soon. We believe the church will be raptured, uh, but what's going on in the Middle East and the rockets going across and all the different things, it's just more of what what's happening in our world to bring Christ back. But the Ezekiel, some refer to it as the Ezekiel War or Gog and Magog. Anyone else before I turn it over to Daryl today? Got a testimony or a prayer request? Okay, Daryl, would you come? You get a sense we live in a very exciting time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, every day I don't watch the news much because it's a, 
it's a downer to me. But every day I turn that on, I'm just amazed at how much closer it seems we're getting to the end, Gene. It, it, it seems like we're in a rush to get there at this point. And uh, thank God, you know, he's in control and, and we don't need to be that concerned about it. I'm calling today uh, Fulfilling a Hunger. And I want us to, uh, I'm trying to lay some foundation on, on, and I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to explain. I, I, I sat at home and I've known this for some time. And I think it's been about two weeks that I've been work. I've been working on this. And of course, you know, when you start, it, it's like, uh, what do I need to talk about this, this week in, uh, in particular? And I think of things that are pertinent. And so, um, I start putting those together. Well, you have the fourth issue this morning. It, and, and it's, if anything, it's, it's the one that I really felt that I didn't really need to give because as I look around, the people that I know are here. Now, I don't know are here are pretty familiar with what we're going to talk about today. But I want to tell you, the church world as a whole is not. And, and we as a whole have that responsibility of carrying that on to the others. And so I just want to say to you, I'm laying a foundation this morning. Um, I'm a teacher. I'm willing to have questions. I'm willing to have input. You might have to trip me to do it, but that's all right. I, that won't bother me at all. Okay. So let's start then. We're born in a world of senses. Now think about, think about most of you've had family or you've been around children and think about what it's like. You know, we, we, we're born where it's important to be able to touch, smell, see, you know, hear those kind of things. And, and that's really how we become aware of life and, and aware of the, the area around us. You know, my, one of the first things that I see them do when uh, a new baby is born is they want to put it near the mother's skin. It's felt the mother's warmth before, but now it's outside. And, and, and that brings that familiarity back to it. It always amazed me. Uh, we, we had a grandson who, and he and his wife had twin girls and they're as different as they can be, you know? And, uh, and the thing that I noticed from the first time we went over there was we're talking and they're just looking at each other and looking back and forth at dad and mom said something. And guess what? Both eyes went to mom and whatever mom said at that point was important to them. Now they understand it. No, but they understand that voice. They did. And so, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. So we learn to be aware of things. We learn that the stove's hot. You know, there's things that you don't touch. Um, <laughs> some of us learn correction, that being that, you know, there's certain limits set. Now, you, you don't do that. No, no, don't do that. And it's, it's in that realm that we learn about the natural world around us. If you've been around children very long, it's not long until we also know that there's something else being developed within them. And, and that has to do, uh, as I call it, a, a life awareness. It's a, another part, if you will, of their human makeup. And, and that part has, it's their soul that particularly we're talking about. And the soul primarily is their will. One of the first words that my children would say was what? Mine. That's mine. That's mine. Now, Scares me a little bit. Where'd they learn that? Well, anyway, you know, that it, they have a will and it starts being expressed pretty quick. They have emotion. That's even expressed quicker. You know, if I'm hungry, I'm going to let you know, you know, that kind of thing. And they have a mind. <laughs> Doesn't take very long until we get to a point that they start manipulating things. And I think I've even told this before, but I'm always reminded of, a, of our, we had a grandson. It was about two and a half at the time. We're out at a nature preserve. It's starting to freeze. It's late November. There's ice along the side of the creek. And he, he asked his dad, he has a walking stick, and he asked his dad, can I break that ice? And he said, yeah, you can break that ice. And, and so he's just breaking that ice down along there, and he's getting closer and closer to the bank, steeper and steeper. And I said, oh, and 
if you're not careful, you're going to fall in that water. You know how cold it is? Yeah, he had someone splashed on him. He knew it was cold. It wasn't any time at all. So he's on the bank, slips down in the water, clear up to his waist, just sitting in the water. You have to know Owen, but he gets up real slow. And he looks at me and he said, it really was dad's fault because he gave me permission to break the ice. <laughs> and we're like that, aren't we? We're looking for someone else if we're not careful in our natural self to put the blame on. Um, that, I think that happened in Genesis, didn't it? I think. Uh, so God's well aware of how we're made. But what I want to get to is sometime in these early years, and it's, I know there's a great difference in children in this, but there's a, if you will, something new. It's it's something you can't see. Uh, you know, it, it's an unfulfilled, but it's a real yearning and emptiness that begins to develop within us. It's unseen, yes, but it's also very real. And I, I was totally amazed that our youngest son's children, the oldest one wasn't very old at all. And he, now you have to realize he, he got to know his grandmother who had cancer, who passed away with cancer. And all of a sudden, grandmother who was there isn't there. So he starts asking some pretty good theological questions for a two-year-old. You know, how did, how did grandma get to heaven? You guys say she's in heaven. How'd that happen? And, and, you know, that kind of thing. So there's something inside of us put there by God that we... Don't see, but it's still very real. And, and he still is someone who really enjoys looking and talking about those kind of things. And if we're not careful, we're very familiar with the natural world. And what we do is we go to the natural world to fulfill that unseen spiritual awakening that's happening in us. And we see people start drinking alcohol. We see them go on drugs sex, you know, you, you name it, they become addicts to that. And what do they find out? What the world has to offer will not satisfy a hunger in the spirit. And, and many don't really understand that. And so <laughs> many of the people who I'm aware of who are in some kind of a rehab, what are they trying to do? They're trying to somehow or other have them overcome their natural world and their emotional world with, with things that they can do, and they, they've missed the point because the only thing that's going to work is what? It's going to be spiritual. And that's Teen Challenge is a good example of that, Gene. We know that people will go in Teen Challenge as a whole. As long as they'll stay there, you know, they are very successful in bringing them in the relationship that they need to be. So... What happens once we get into that mess? What you know, or we, we become convicted, we have shame, you know, and guilt. So I'm going to ask you a question: Why? Why is that hunger there? Why is that in there? So we have to go to First Thessalonians 5:23. Paul, and it's his final prayer in his first letter to the Thessalonians, and he he gives them this blessing. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you, or if he will, set you apart completely. Now he's saying holy. That word's it. Now, the Spirit of God to put that in there for some reason. He's not wanting you to be set apart mind-wise, worldly-wise. He's wanting our whole being to be set apart, if you will. Completely holy, and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved. And so that's one of the places where Paul had an understanding that when, when God made us, if you will, he, he, uh, he, he made us into three distinct parts, and those parts are somewhat interchanged, interlocked, but we are a body, a soul, and a spirit. Now let's think about that just a moment. In the Corinthians church, Again, Paul, they had a number of practical, doctrinal, cultural challenges. You, you, that's something else we can talk about another time. But anyway, these problems exist in our church and in, in, in us as Christians. 
But the thing that I want to get you to is, now let's see what he said was the answer to them. Let's see how he, he was prompted by the Spirit to challenge them. And specifically in the second paragraph, the guidance can be found in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. His farewell statement there says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace, you know, the, the unmerited favor, but also the power to live in that of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father. But then he makes a very important statement and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I think one of the things that we're missing and one of the things that has caused our church internationally as a whole to fall short, and particularly here in America, is that we've kind of decided that, you know, we really love the love of the Father, you know, and, and we love the grace that the Lord Jesus has given us to be born again. But somehow or other, that communion with the Holy Spirit has been kind of put someplace, back burner, out the door in a lot of cases. And, and I don't know what many of you I know probably grew up in, in where the Holy Spirit was prominent in the church. I did not. And I remember how we, well, we, we had a lot of problems <laughs> relating to other people in the church when we started seeing in the Word of God, hey, he talks a lot about the Holy Spirit and what he's going to do. So let's read on. As we navigate life's journey, this yearning, this emptiness that we feel is, is because we are created in his, God's image, with a need to communicate with our creator father by the Holy Spirit. And our physical, emotional lives are being challenged. That starts almost at birth. You can see it in children that, you know, emotionally, that, you know, they start crying when they're hungry, that, you know, they, they, they start sensing uh, the feeling and, and those kind of things. That happens almost immediately. Yet that yearning, that, that it doesn't happen that quick. And, and so what's going on? Well, the spirit it's, itself is yearning for a communication with the Holy Spirit, our spirit with the Holy Spirit, and only the Holy Spirit can satisfy this emptiness. Our interaction with the physical and the world doesn't fulfill this unseen, this real yearning. And, and I guess the life lesson I have is that we're created with three distinct yet overlapping areas of expression, our body, our soul, and our spirit. And the body and soul develop and begin soon after birth, but our spirit a lot of times is later in life. And if we're not careful, we get all caught up in seeing that the children have their emotion and their body experiences in line. And we let, if we're not careful, and we see a number of parents letting go this spiritual need that's within them. So in Christian circles, we often talk of not having religion. In other words, you know, just a mental consent, and, and, and that's critical, but we need a personal relationship. And that needs to be something that, that occurs because of the Holy Spirit. Another theological uh, <laughs> thing that Jackson asked me about, I got a call, call from his dad, and his dad says, uh, hey, dad, um, Jackson has a question for you. No, it wasn't for Nathan, but anyway, he said, um, you know, as, as, I, as I'm looking at things here, he said, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm wondering how this is all going to play out. And, and one of the things that, that bothers me is, Jackson's saying, is that he saw people in his church saying that Jesus was coming to live in their heart. So what's he thinking? I just seen Jesus' picture in Sunday school. And now he's coming to live in my heart. How's that happening? He's a lot bigger than I am. How's that happening? You ever thought about it? Jackson did. And I think we, we sometimes we make some assumptions in, in the church that we understand what it means, but those outside the church, those who haven't had their spirit awakened, don't know. 
So I had to explain to him about spirit. Now that was, uh, that was interesting. And I'm thinking I have to really get down to some brass tacks. No, he just wanted one explanation, a simple explanation of how could that happen? And, and so we, we talked about the spirit. We talked about a situation he'd been just been through with a, uh, animal he'd seen on the road. He's a very compassionate fella and how that animal, he knew it before and that animal, how alive and aggressive it was. And now it's not. So we were able to satisfy him at that point. And I would just say to you, we need to be careful of what terms we use. You know, it, yeah, I realize it's the spirit of Jesus that's in us, but it's, you know, if you will, those who are unchurched, and I don't know about you, but I'm amazed at the number of people that I'm meeting now who have no hint at all about spiritual things. They've never, most of them have never blackened the door. They don't know anything about it. And so, you know, we need to be careful that we use terms that, that bring them to their knowledge. So knowing about the Holy Spirit and knowing him personally in daily fellowship are two very distinct things. At creation, Adam had communion with God. And, you know, they walked together in the coolness of the evening in the, in the uh, garden. <laughs> and God came back another time and said, Adam, where are you? Remember that? Because he just messed up and he was hiding. And that's another whole story. But because of that, you know, what happened was he disobeyed the father. And then what happened to his spirit? A, a spirit that was alive and open to God now is closed. And, and as a result, we have, you know, people, children born into this world physically, emotionally. But when it comes spiritually, their spirit is asleep. It's not alive. And it's our job to liven it. Now, I, you know, as, as I think about this, um, I think I left off one. Let me, let me I'm just going to back up here. Uh, oh, yeah. And in John 3, 3, you remember the statement, Nicodemus had come and, and he's he's got all he understands the scriptures. He's got that all down but he doesn't understand being born again. Remember that? And Jesus told him he must be born again. So I want to suggest to you that being born again is a very distinct, deliberate action. And it's necessary for us to begin our communion with the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I've been in that situation where you want to invite people to give their heart and life to Christ but in the midst of that, if you're not careful, we don't make it, we make it a mental consent. And what do they do? They walk out into the world in the same situ same <laughs> trouble, <laughs> mostly, that they walked in with. And, and I think it's, you know, it's very critical for us to make sure that, that and, and I'm trusting there's people online, like I say, I know most people in here have been through this, but I'm trusting there's people online who, who you're wondering, how, how can I have that fellowship that, with the spirit that the team's been talking about? Well, I think, you know, as you think about this, one of the things that we need to know is that, that in order to have that, there's another thing that needs to occur, and, and that's our salvation. And actually, you know, as you look at that statement back there, it says you must be born again. Another part of that born again is that we need to be born from above. And, and when he said born again, remember what Nicodemus's reaction was? I'm a grown man. How is mom going to have me birthed again? A little bit like Jackson and, and Jesus getting into him. And so, you know, I, I think that, again, those are opportunities for us to, to expand spiritual things in, into situations where they've not been before. But I, I just I just want to say that, you know, and I've seen in our day, um, this thing of being born again is just used in 
in worldly talk. And they have no idea what they're really saying. And so, you know, I think it's up to us to, to challenge that. Um, I want to say to you, you know, being born again is your key to heaven. If you don't have that key, you're not going to get in. Now, we can say it a lot of different ways. We can say, you know, it's the blood of Christ. It's nothing I do. Yeah. But you need to be born again. And, and, and that's a part of, of what we're talking about. And I would just say, again, <laughs> if, if you don't accept that blood, it, and it's a kind of a humbling experience sometimes, but you, if you don't accept that blood of Christ as cleansing your sin and not, it, not you being a good guy, the good gal, that you don't have a key. You're not going to get in. And, and I think there's going to be a number of people very, very disappointed. If we, you know, and and our, our job is to make sure that that's clarified. Now, in Romans 8.1, um, and I'm, I'm open to any, anything that you want to say. I'm, I'm, I'm hurrying through a subject here that I spent uh, a lot of time. Matter of fact, there's two pages laying on my desk that I didn't include because there's just not enough time in this. But Paul, again, to the Romans says, now there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So what did he just say? If you're born again, condemnation to keep you out of heaven will not occur. You got the key, right? That's what he said to them. In my, That's my hillbilly rendition of that. And then he said, the human nature of Jesus, he was born of a woman, and someone said he was a nine-month baby. Not only was he born, but he was developed in his mother's womb for nine months. It was, you know, that was real. He has the same temperament as we face. But he was sinless. He did not yield to any temptations. And in Philippians 2 7, it says, But make he made himself of no reputation, if you will. He emptied himself of his privileges. This is the Son of God, who God only knows how long had lived with his Father in heaven, and he saw that Daryl was going to need a way to make it to heaven. There was no other way. And Jesus was sent down here, became a human being, just like we are in every realm, put away his privilege of being God. And I, I've had people say, yeah, but the reason that we saw the miracles in his life is because he was God. No, he wasn't. He, he put that privilege away and he did what? He showed us exactly how we are to live the kingdom life here. Okay. Taking the form of a bond servant. And we don't really understand that, but it's a slave. Most of us have never been slaves. Although uh, I remember one boy worked uh, at a uh, grocery store and it was called pick and save. And he, they called it pack and slave. And um, I don't think we really know exactly what a slave really goes through. And coming in the likeness of man, he came, he came to be like us, exactly like us. And he veiled the manifestations of the deity. In other words, those were not exhibited. They were, he was exhibiting what you can do as a man here on earth. And, and they would assume they were real. He was real. He was an actual hum, humanity. In all ways, he become like us, but he remained sinless. <laughs> I had to put that word in big letters for myself. I thought, you know, the temptations and all, he faced everything that you faced, everything that I faced, everything sitting, anybody around you's faced, he faced them and he remained sinless. Think about that. Had the same nature we had. Although we receive a measure of the spirit at, re, at our uh, rebirth, spiritual rebirth, the spirit of God after Pentecost challenges believers to be filled with the spirit, Ephesians 5.18. And this is Pentecost Sunday. And Paul in Acts 19.2 Asked the disciples, they were the believers. He asked people who were believers, people who were what? Born again. He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They were believers. And then what was their answer? We didn't even know there was Holy Spirit. That's where we are in this world today. 
There are a lot of people who don't know there's a Holy Spirit. Your my job is to make that happen. And since he asked disciples this question, the implied notion is that there exists a receiving of the Holy Spirit after their believing. He later reminds these Ephesian believers to be filled with the Spirit. That's at 518 above. And the indication is they are to remain filled. You know, when, when you look at that field, it means there's an infilling, but it also means it's something that you need to maintain. You need to remain filled. And, and if you will, there needs to be refilling. It's some, you know, if you, if you drink water out of a glass, how do you get water out of it the next time? You refill it, right? And so you and I, by the power of God, may be out there doing things for Christ, being vessels for him, but we need to keep the vessel full. We need to open ourselves for him. And Jack Hayford reminds us that the tense of the Greek for be filled makes clear that such a spirit-filled condition does not stop with a single experience, but to maintain by actually being, filled, being refilled. I think I got being filled here by being refilled is what it should have been. All right. Any comments? <laughs> I really like feedback, but I, I know you're not used to that. Comments? All right. <clears throat> I think it's safe to say that when the Holy Spirit fills you, you're going to know it. And I've had people say, well, I'm not sure. Ron, you'll be sure. You will be sure. In Acts 1.5, Jesus says, but they shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days since, not many days from now. And it seems that he was referring to experience that they would know, hey, this is it. When it happens, this is it. So in Acts 1.8, and Acts 1.8 comes after Acts 1.5, and I think at times I forget that Jesus left the earth how many days after his crucifixion? Now, you got to speak. How many days afterwards? 40. And then Pentecost is when? 50. So, Gene, 10 days, where are we? We're in the upper room. Okay? And so I, I say that to, to, you know, to say that we, we don't want to think that this is something that occurred absolutely immediately, but they, they said they were with one accord, didn't it? And, and they were in one place. And so they're there, if you will, anticipating that the Spirit's going to come. And it seems like that he's referring to experience that we'll know this is it. And, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you. Then in Acts 2.1, when, when Pentecost, day of Pentecost had fully come, Acts or verse 2, there came a sound from heaven. It says, as a rushing mighty wind. And then verse 3, there appeared to them divided tongues as fire, and one sat where? On each one of them. They knew that the Holy Spirit had arrived. Are you going to have fire, tongues of fire on you when you receive the Holy Spirit? Probably not. But I'm saying to you, you will know that there has been an infilling bigger than anything you've ever had in your life. And then he says, and they were filled with the Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as they gave them, as the Spirit gave them utterance. If you will, they knew. Now, if you go through the book of Acts, and I know there's controversy about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and tongues and those kind of things. And, and I, I just want to say, look at Acts 2, 2, 4. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with tongues. Acts 8, 18, Simon Peter, remember him? He, he was, uh, it, it was on that rooftop, remember that? Okay, and the Holy Spirit was given, and it, it implies that they knew when the Holy Spirit came. There was some kind of a manifestation when that occurred. Acts 9, 17, Brother Saul, Paul, on the way to Damascus, Jesus appeared, went into the house of Tanner, and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus appeared to you on the road. 
And he has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you will, this experience was Paul's initial baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we know from his works, he said he spoke in tongues more than all of us. Acts 10, 49. While Peter was still speaking, the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out. And 46, where they heard the Gentiles. This is when you and I got grafted in. <laughs> They heard the Gentiles speaking in tongues. 19.6, Paul had laid hands on, the whole, on them. The Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues. So Peter, if you will, and, and it always amazed me. Think about Peter. He denied the Lord three times, one time cursing. He saw the Lord after resurrection, and he went back fishing. And then here he is at Pentecost, and God moves on him to stand up, and he preaches. Now, I wonder what that was like. <laughs> if, if you look at, at what he quotes, and I'm pretty sure that Nelson Publishing hadn't put out the Bible for him yet, but he evidently quotes some things from memory. And as you think about that, he also makes a promise. And he says, for this promise is to you. And he's talking to that 3,000 around there. And I want to say to you, he's talking to you and me, okay? To you and your children, because here we are, and to all who were are far off. He's talking about far off in distance, and he's talking about far off what? In time. And Jesus is the same. How's that go? Yesterday, Yesterday today, and forever. Okay? And, and as many as the Lord our God will call, if you will, every believer, every generation. This is a promise for them. And the Holy Spirit arrived at Pentecost, devout men from every nation under heaven came together and saw the unlearned, uncommon people speaking languages that they'd never learned. So here we got these fishermen, got tax collectors, are in the upper room, 120 of them, and they're speaking tongues that they've never learned. And here are these learned people, as I understand, we're having a convention and, and living there at, at that particular time, and they hear them speaking. And if, if you need to, to know where they're from, that's in Acts 2.11, lots of countries. And here they see these, and hear these people speaking their language. And as a matter of fact, it says, speaking in our own, the foreigner's tongue, the wonderful works of God. They were praising God in the tongues of these foreigners. And Pentecost began supernatural. You know, remember the tongues of fire, the sound like a mighty wind, speaking un unlearned languages. And, and But that's not the end. As we look at the rest of the book of Acts, what do we notice? We see the Holy Spirit working through men. People who remain filled, working through them and doing very Amazing acts, supernatural acts. So it wasn't the people, and, and <laughs> you, you remember they, they were people were so excited they went and started making gods out of the men, and they said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. you don't understand. This is this has nothing to do with me. It's just flowing through me. I'm the vessel. God's doing this. We need to give the credit where it's due." So in our day. To some, the baptism of the Spirit is a no-no. To others, receiving has become an accomplishment. And, and I just want to say to you, I've talked to a lot of people who said, yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. 30-some years ago, I spoke in tongues. What about last night? The Holy Spirit, the ho I see Gene shaking his head. The Holy Spirit is there for us all the time. As we remain filled, it's it's not a badge that yeah I'm you know I'm something special you know I, I'm in, and 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 I saw that a lot. We 
we were in denominational churches and and there were uh, there was a lot of backfighting because of God's spirit coming in but the po point I want to make is that there were some who were satisfied with that and the same them same people would come to church next Sunday and sit in the same pew and go out and live the same way the next and never ever ever saw the spirit of God work through them now, that's almost as bad as not ever knowing. Maybe it's worse. So to others, receiving has become this accomplishment. It was never meant to be a point of arrival at some spiritual plateau, but it's a beginning for the power of, uh, to, to empower believers to witness through their life particularly and through the words and in the deeds that they do. And a lot of times we don't really need to be making any speech to someone. They just need to see that we are Christians by our love. They need to see the power of God having us work in situations with people that others would walk around. Remember the good Samaritan? What do they remember about him? People who should have helped walked around. Some went to the other side, but, but the one if you will, the Samaritan, the foreigner, he was the one who stayed there and took care of him. So in Philippians, just in case we forget, it is God who works in you to will and to do his great pleasure. And I think we've all seen situations where men, women have been lifted up because of what God did through them and they accepted the praise, and it wasn't good. I'm about done, Sherry. So here we are as vessels of God's love of mankind. And I just remind you, a review of the early church in the book of Acts should bring us to our shame. Um, even congregations which claim to be full gospel or spirit-filled often lack any indication that the Spirit of God is moving by his power through people in that situation. Shame on us. They have a badge. It's on the sign out front. The first century church experienced demonstrations of the Spirit's supernatural power, miracles, healings, evangelistic outreach. Now, this was one of those things I want to put in there, and I, I just couldn't help it. I said, Lord, you got to let me have a half a paragraph. At times, it, as these times become more and more challenging, we're going to see the enemy, the dark side, the evil side, do powerful, supernatural things. Okay? And so I've been in situations where somebody says, I can't tell whether that's God doing that or whether that's the devil doing that. I'm not involved either way. You know, you will know. God in us will let us know that this is this is something He's doing. And and I would just say to you, you know, one one of the songs was talking about how how you know he, he's he's going to flow into us, and we we need to be people who realize that we are being challenged. God has us, you too, at this time, at this place. Because he has something for you to do. Be ready. So our challenge is to be a willing vessel to challenge the counterfeit. And I couldn't help it. I had to put it in there. Step up, Elijah's. I'm not sure I'm ready yet to go out and kill the bull, put water all around it, okay? But I guess if it comes to that, Greg, I'll call you and we'll see if we can get it done, okay? Let's pray. Greg, you can come up if you will and close here too. Lord, help us prepare. Help us to be willing vessels who recognize the opportunities that you give. I know at times, Lord, we miss many of those opportunities. Help us to recognize them. Help us to be humble. Help us to be self-sacrificing. And most of all, Especially for me, Lord, help me to be bold. 
please. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Stand with me if you would. Thank you, Daryl, for that. I want us in the closing moments of this service. If you're here this morning and you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As we sing, just say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit come. God will touch your tongue. It'll be your words. I mean, it'll be your tongue that God will use, but he'll fill you with his words. So those that are watching live stream today, you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. As we worship the Lord in this song, you reach out and you say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Touch me, Lord, I pray. God could fill you as you're driving down the road. He could fill you in your bedroom. The Bible says, they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. It comes from a hunger from within. Lord, I want all that you have for me. I remember a lady that said, you know, I don't know anything about it. I'm going to ask my pastor. She asked her pastor, and the pastor said, well, we believe in it. We just don't practice it. Well, that's a little, that's not good. It's part of the word of God. We need the power of the Holy Spirit, like Daryl said. Be full of the Holy Ghost. Be renewed in him. You know, let be filled up. And the Bible says, I'm going to fill you so full that you can't contain it. That's good. That's the Holy Ghost. So as we sing and as Sherry leads us, you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. You say, Lord, even as I stand here, even in these moments, Lord, touch me in that way and fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, we ask. In Jesus' name, Sherry, lead us this morning. And welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Come fill us with your power. Live inside. say this, that the Holy Spirit is a game changer in the life of the believer. Just as Daryl was mentioning in his message today, God reveals things to us. We need the Holy Spirit in this hour. 
In this end times, we need the Holy Spirit. First of all, we need the strength. Other reasons is because God will direct us and he'll reveal things that we need to know. He will alert us. We're living in an age of deception, an age of lying. The father of lies is at work today. And things are going to come in safe places. This deception comes in the safe place. And it's going to come like an angel of light, but it's going to come from the devil. And we're going to need the Holy Spirit to say, that's not of me, that's of the devil. That's not my word, that's a false word. That's why we need to be so full of the Holy Spirit that we don't get sidetracked, that we don't get pushed off the path of where God is leading us. We need to be full of the Holy Ghost. So when we sing that song, Come Holy Spirit, get so full of God, get so full of His Holy Spirit so that we could function in this hour and function in victory. Listen, Jesus didn't say, I'm leaving you alone he says i'm leaving you with the with another comforter because you need him you need him go to jerusalem and wait until he comes he's a game changer aren't you glad for the holy spirit today amen father i thank you for your word i thank you for the presence and the anointing of your holy spirit i thank you that so many in this room today have already received the baptism those that are watching online, many have received, but if they haven't, Lord, may their hearts be hungry for that, that you may fill them so full. For this we give you praise, we give you glory, in Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Go in the blessings of the Lord and be a light in this hour for his glory, amen. Feel me.